Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your word that you teach us and reveal yourself to us. We thank you that your presence is right here with us. So, Lord God, today, we, tonight, as we get into the, into the word, we just expect to hear from you and to speak to our hearts. Our ears are open, and we just have fellowship with you. We praise you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're continuing on the language of God, and um, so we're going to go to John 10, and we're going to read a little bit there. <clears throat> but I'm, uh, what I want to talk about is the, the tone of the Father's voice. Uh, what kind of tone does he have? And, um, you know, he's not, um, it's not harsh, even though he had very strong tone with the, uh, the, uh, with unbelief and religion. Uh, but we want to, I just want to talk about the tone of his voice because we want to learn to recognize his voice. And he, and there is a tone that he has when he addresses his children. So we're going to go to the, to the Word of God and just, um, you know, Jesus, Jesus came to reveal who the Father is. So it's important for us just to look and see what Jesus says about hearing God. And so we're going to just uh, read uh, quite a bit here in uh, John chapter 10. It says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up another way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the, door, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and he will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they, might, that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives life to his sheep, for, gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. The other sheep I have, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down for, of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. <clears throat> this command I have received from my Father. Therefore there was a division again among the Jews because of these sayings. And many of them said, He has a demon, and he is mad. Why do you listen to him? Others said, These are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then the then Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. 
But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I had said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And isn't that a wonderful promise there at the, that nobody's going to be able to snatch you out of Jesus' hand and nobody's going to be able to snatch you out of the Father's hand. And what a great promise that is. Um, Dave, the, uh, I've heard him say this more than once, but he, he, uh, he said that God speaks to our destiny and not to our past. And when we're thinking about hearing his voice, that's a really good test because uh, to apply if we're hearing the Lord because God always speaks about who we are, what our destiny is, where we're going. And uh, his voice uh, always leads us, uh, comforts. Uh, there's, there's correction, but it's the kind of correction that gets you back on the path going towards your destiny. It's not the, you know, the, the uh, correction where you, you just messed up and, and uh, uh, beats us. It's, that's, not, that's not his voice. His voice always leads us towards faith and leads us towards love and, of course, leads us in truth. You know, the devil's voice, uh, it's, it's not that way. It's condemnation. Um, it's, the, it's the voice of separation, and that can be really, really subtle. Because uh, one of the MOs of the devil is to try to separate you from the flock and from the, from the, the sheep. And so it's a voice, you know, you don't belong. Uh, they really don't care about you. You don't really fit in. Um, you're, you're a failure. And the devil tends to, to, look at your, to look at your past and bring up maybe things there and say, because based on your past, you're never going to succeed. Uh, and so he'll bring, you know, bring that. But God's always saying your destiny and saying, yes, this is who you are. This is what you can be. Um, and there's also the voice of self, you know, what about me, you know, or selfishness. Uh, and uh, sometimes that speaks really loud in our ears, ears too. Um, but, you know, as we, as we read this, if, if, you know, if we were attentive to we could probably hear his voice you know, as we read the scripture because he speaks through the scripture and he's speaking to us and wanting to reveal himself to us. Uh, on our trip out to Colorado, up in the mountains, and we hadn't, it was so funny how things always prove you wrong. I, I remember it was Joe or I we said, you know, we haven't seen any sheep up here for a long time. <laughs> we go around the mountain, there are sheep. And it was a... <laughs> Because we used to you know, run into that quite a bit. And uh, this one, this whole mountainside, I mean, there were sheep everywhere. I mean, it was a, a huge uh, flock of sheep. And they're scattered all over. Well, you know when you see sheep, there's going to be a shepherd. There's always a shepherd there. And there's always a dog. And uh, I remember one time we went, um, it was a different place, and there was a lot of sheep. And... Yeah, there's the shepherd, and then there's a couple of these great white dogs. I don't know what, and they, you know, because there's, there's always, the shepherd is always present with the sheep. And, you know, you can, you can leave the cows to themselves, and the pigs, and, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of animals, the chickens. But the sheep always, ha always has a shepherd. And uh, Joe said, well, you know, and we saw a tent on down. I said, well, that's probably the other shepherd. And there might have been more than just one. You know, he's probably sleeping while this one's out. And, you know, we went by and, the, and those dogs are so cute. I mean, but that dog is just watching. And, uh, and the shepherd's just, he's just there watching. And so, you know, that's how when, when, you, th when you, and Jesus uses this illustration, he's revealing who the Father is. And he's revealing that the this this relationship of how to hear and the the sheep know the shepherd's voice and um, 
uh, I was thinking about that sheepdog, and I'm not going. I'm not uh, comparing the Holy Spirit to the sheepdog, but but you know the the shepherds stand, you know, watching over. But when there's a time to move, or there needs to be somebody brought in, you know, somebody, uh, it, the sheepdog is on it. And it's just amazing how that works. Well, that's like the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know, he's, he's there. He's the, he's the one who gets us going and he comes around. And, but they're always watching and caring. And, um, you know, that, and, and I know this probably had to be a real foreign concept to, to the Pharisees. They were having a hard time getting this. But if you think about the Heavenly Father, he, he's always watching and caring. Uh, and... and uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, he, he's there to, to help us. And, you know, you, you think about shepherds. Hello there. Come on in. Your watch quit. That's a good excuse. <laughs> the, the shepherd, you know, uh, anytime we've ever went by and was, you know, and, and, uh, you know you've, you've probably done a study on shepherds. And, but, they're just sitting there pretty calm. They're not, you know, they're not running around, hollering, jumping up and down. They're just sitting watching. And, you know, they're, I don't think they're harsh. They're very calm. Um, they're, they're gentle, but they're firm, you know. They're watching. Is that, you know, if, if a sheep, there's some freedom to the sheep, but if they get in danger, they're going to be right there. And, uh, and you think about sheep, they don't have any defense. You know, they don't have claws or, um, I mean, I suppose maybe they could kick you, but, you know, all they can do is ba, ba, and, uh, and we're very good at ba, ba. <laughs> Some more desperate, and, uh, but they don't have any, they really don't have any way of protecting themselves. And, uh, but the shepherd is, is, is there to protect. And, it's, it's interesting in this revelation, and I know it's because God's an invisible God while we're here, but it's interesting that we would know him by his voice and not his appearance. It says, you know, he brings out that, you know, he didn't say that the sheep know, know me because of the way I look. He says, I know my voice. And so, you know, it tells us that it's about conversation. And on Sunday, we had a, you know, the, the prophetic word was, you know, talking about conversation. God wants to have conversation with us. And to know a voice, if you're going to learn a voice, learn to hear God, God has to be speaking for us to learn his voice, right? And so, you know, so God is speaking, he, he is talking. That's the only way we're going to know his voice. You know, if, he, if he's just sitting there really quiet, like a lot of people say, well, you know, God doesn't speak anymore. You're not going to learn his voice because you're not going to recognize it. Uh, but he is speaking. And so, you know, the, the sheep hear his gentle, firm, protective voice. And we learn to hear, you know, to recognize that voice. Um, and so the shepherd is talking, and he's talking to his sheep. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you, I'm sure, you know, the, these shepherds, you know, they're, they're out there by themselves, because uh, uh, we usually just see one or maybe two. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure they, at night, they sing over the sheep, you know, and, and uh, sing over them. And, but think of the care. Uh, and always watching, always looking over and watching. Um, <clears throat> it, you know, it says in verse 3 as we're going through here, you know, he, he calls their name. You know, and the, and, the, and the shepherd calls your name. God calls your name. Jesus calls your name. And uh, we, you know, if we get attentive, we, he'll call our name. Um, it says in verse 4, you know, uh, talking about he goes out before. You know, it's Jesus went before us. He leads. He doesn't drive us. And you've probably heard the, the saying, you know, don't beat, don't beat the sheep. You can't drive the sheep, uh, but you lead the sheep. And sometimes referring to 
pastors. That's what you do. You lead. But that's what the good shepherd, he leads. He, he came to earth. Uh, Jesus came to earth as the good shepherd. And he led the way of how we're to live this life. He led the way to salvation. He, he, uh, it wasn't like God setting up and here's the rules and you know, trying to drive us into that direction. He came and led us. Uh, he led the captive free. He, he came, and he, so he is the one who leads. And so that's what a shepherd does. They lead the sheep. Uh, they, and, and so we, we, there is this voice that's always there leading, guiding, directing. Um, it says in here in verse 12 that uh, the shepherd owns the sheep. And uh, we've been bought with a price. We're not our, not our own. We have been purchased. And maybe something we don't talk about a lot because, uh, especially here in America, we're so independent. And uh, I was, I uh, can't remember what was going on. Things were getting out of hand at the pa pastor's meeting as far as people going down trails. Uh, Leroy Keith and I always... Uh, things that could be so go so spiritual, and then it just goes off the deep end, you know, real fast. And and uh, seems like I'm I'm by uh, Pastor uh, Leroy quite a bit when that happens. And he just looks at me and goes, "Well, we lost them." <laughs> but and I said something about, "Well, we're just so independent." And uh, we we uh, the concept that we are owned. You know, it's maybe a little, you know, we don't, we don't like that concept in the, you know, as a free people, but we have been purchased. We, we have been purchased in the thing that we've been purchased to be set free to live this life, but we still belong to the Lord. Uh, he's bought us with his own blood. So, you know, you have the shepherd who he owns the sheep. He has a vested interest in you. He has, you know, when you, when you own uh, like even livestock and you own them, you have a vested interest that you want to see that that animal survive. Well, God, you know, he purchased you with his, his own son's blood. He has a vested interest. He cares for you. And see, this whole passage is talking about hearing the voice of the Lord and the sheep know his voice. And so you begin to understand the tone of the father's voice. That is not harsh. It's not hard. It's not condemning. He is a. He's a. He is the good shepherd who is cares for you. He has a vested interest. He has a vested interest in you being successful. He has a vested interest in you, in your protection, in your blessing, all of those things. He has. He has paid the price, and he and he loves you and he cares for. For you, and then, and then it goes on to say that in verse thirteen, uh, the, the care for the sheep. And you think about the shepherd. Back to this illustration that that Jesus is revealing about the heavenly Father. You know, he he uh, he cares. He provides. Uh, he watches over. He protects, and enjoys. You know, uh, he enjoys watching the the sheep. We've got some some wild kittens running around and we're trying to figure out if we can get them trapped and and all that and we're feeding the mama but we need to try to trap them before we have more kittens and all that but they they've been running into the yard at night and running up the trees and and so joe and i've been watching them and it's just fun to watch them you know just fun to watch these little animals that god created and they're just you know running here and there and they're so cute but you know when our Heavenly Father loves us and cares for us and watches over us, doesn't he take pleasure in us? And I know sometimes that's really hard, especially if you've been taught that you're worthless and you never measure up and God's up there with a big hammer. And before the, before the meeting tonight, I, Dave wanted to know I was going to preach on and uh, teach on. And I said about the tone, God's tone. And he, he immediately, and then me going, yeah, come on, you know, and the, the tone of his voice. But, but when the reality is we, you know, we got to rethink because here's Jesus telling us about, we're going to hear God. We're not hearing him 
from the, the, the mountain, Mount Sinai, you know, with this rumble and the thunder, and he could speak that way, of course. But he's telling you, you're going to hear the voice of the Heavenly Father and the Good, and the good Shepherd in this format. And, of course, they, they could understand the relationship between the this, this shepherd and the sheep. It, it's, a, it's a caring, loving relationship. And it's, this is how you're going to hear his voice. It's out of this, this, this watchful shepherd speaking over his sheep. The tone of his voice is not going to be harsh and condemning. You know, he, has, he cares about you. He's going to gather you close. He's, he's out to watch for your welfare and your health. And so we get a totally different, you know, a picture than sometimes where our mind, mind goes, that he is this one who enjoys, enjoys his, his people, and that he takes pleasure in you. He takes pleasure in, in watching you. Uh, he, 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 he takes pleasure in, in seeing you learn things and find out things. And, are, and uh, just like you would with a, with a child, you know, Emmett was running, you know, he said some of the funniest things. And, you know, and, uh, and uh, I was talking to Corey today and I said, you know, we, I've heard that, you know, little kids are geniuses. You know, and, and somewhere they start losing the genius. Uh, I think um, junior high, <laughs> it, it all goes away. But but that they're like they're geniuses because you think about nobody, you know. If if we were going to learn a foreign language, we'd have to go to school. We'd have to have some experts try to teach us how to learn. They just pick it up. They just I mean they're learning, they're figuring it all out on their own. They're geniuses and. Uh, and he was doing something, and just how funny, you know. But see, God, he, when he sees us find out something about him or find out something about his creation, and, and look, and he looks down, and he goes, man, look at that genius down there. You know, look what they, what they figured out. You know, he takes pleasure in us. And, you know, the, and so, you know, the, the, the shepherd, you know, they care. And so the Heavenly Father cared. And again, this is talking about hearing his voice says, the sheep will know my voice. So we know that the shepherd is speaking to the sheep. He's, he's speaking or there's a, he's their communication going on all the time if we open our ears and hear what the, the shepherd is saying and we'll know his voice. Um, then in ver, you know, verse 16, it goes on that he's talking about the other flock and, and uh, you know, I think the Gentiles and probably. We won't get into big doctrine stuff. But it's interesting, he says there's one flock. And that's really, it is important doctrinally, one flock and one shepherd. That there isn't just many, many flocks. There's not all these groups. God looks at his children as one flock. There's only one. And they only come to the Heavenly Father through Jesus. That he's the only way and there's only one shepherd and uh and so he makes it pretty clear here that there isn't any other and so you know we're we are uh just you know just a few sheep among many 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 of a worldwide flock that that god is looking over and, and speaking to and loving and caring and that he is the only the only shepherd um and then in verse 26, you know, he's talking to the, the Pharisees or somebody. <laughs> they. He's speaking to they. You know who they are. The, the they that are always saying something. Um, but he, he said that uh, you, don't, you don't hear my voice because you don't believe. And we talked about this bef before. In that faith, you have to believe that you can hear God's voice. And by believing, you hear more. And here he says, you, you're not, you, you don't believe, so you're not going to hear. And so we, when we read the, the script, we, we believe. And so we can hear. We hear his voice. And so faith has a lot to do with hearing. And the enemy is going to try to convince you that you can't hear but you just simply believe 
the scripture that the heavenly fa the, the good shepherd is speaking and I believe he is speaking and I'll hear his voice and we've talked some in the previous uh, classes you know with, that he speaks his, you know, his language is you know impressions or a thought or a word or just a knowing we just know that we know that we know uh, he, he we learn his language um, but we are confident that we are his sheep and we know that we can hear his voice and the more we believe that the more we hear his voice and we just and a, and we learn that a stranger's voice we won't we won't follow so we we, we learn his 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 language how he speaks to us, you know, that he, he speaks to us through his word. But, um, but faith has, you know, it, when it talks about here, it says, uh, uh, you do not believe because you are not my sheep. You know, you, you, if you're my sheep, you'll believe. And so we just believe. We can hear the, uh, the, the shepherd's voice and the, the more we will hear. And then again, you know, just that, that promise that comes because the good shepherd, the shepherd's so watchful over the sheep, always watching, always looking over, you know, and that, that dog is always on, a, on alert and, uh, and always caring that there's nobody gonna, is able to snatch you out of Jesus' hand. And then, you know, he just, he just makes that point again, and then no one can snatch you out of the Father's hand, and we are one, so nobody's going to get you. And what comfort that should bring is we just, we know that we are safe in, this, in that fold. And we just trust the Good Shepherd. We trust Him. And so, you know, as you, part of, part of uh, learning to uh, recognize His voice and follow Him is to learn the tone of His voice. That His tone with you will not be harsh. It, there may be correction, but it's simply, my child, go this way. He's going to point you towards your destiny. He's going to encourage you. And your past has, no, has nothing to do with your future when he begins to, you know, based upon that. But we can recognize if, if we hear something else that's harsh, then we know that's not, not the shepherd's voice because he cares and he's watching over. And... Uh, uh, you've probably had experiences where you, you may have been in a um, difficult situation or things are going on or just, and when you really kind of settle down and get your emotion, you know, what, what do you hear? You hear that gentle, uh, caring, strong uh, voice of the Good Shepherd. It's not harsh. It's just this, it's a drawing voice. You know, it's, it's a, there's peace in his voice. There's a, there's a care, there's a protect in his voice. And sometimes we just have to kind of settle down and, and hear that. Uh, and uh, when uh, we've seen some sheep being moved in Colorado and they move them right down the road and they just take the road. And it, it's kind of a little chaotic you know, when they have to go to a new place and there's lots of bah, bah, bah all over the place. <laughs> and, but, you know, and, and, you know, but they're, they're being led someplace and they're going, but I don't know, it might be, I don't like this place, bah, where are we going, bah, I don't know. God's abandoning us, bah, and they're right in the middle of the, <laughs> and the sheepdogs are working and the shepherds are there. But, you know, if we can just settle down, you know, the shepherd's right there. He's leading. And he's leading us. We, he is not sending us someplace he is not going. When you're being led and you think, man, how am I going to get through this thing? No, God's ahead of you. He's leading you the way through. He's not back there going, good luck, fellas. <laughs> you go right through there. Now he's leading, and that's the, that's the good shepherd. And what a great picture this is. It should bring us peace and to know that we're listening for that, that kind of voice, the, the, that tone of voice when we listen to him. Amen? Um, 
So, you know, we can use it as a test when we're in, where we're listening and we're, th- whether, well, is that God or is that not God? What does that sound like, the voice of the Good Shepherd? You know, does that sound like the, is the Good Shepherd talking to me? You know, or is fear or self-condemnation, uh, somebody throwing up, you know, here's the do's and don'ts, you better do them, you know. Uh, does it sound like the Good Shepherd? What's the tone in his voice? What's the, what, what's the inflection in his voice? Is there panic? Uh, I don't think he's panicked. Um, you know, is there fear? No. No, he's, he's, he's got you. So, you know, that's a good test to use. And, uh, and then sometimes we just have to settle down and get those other voices settled down and begin to hear, hear him. Um, so praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. I'm done. So anybody have anything that, as we was going through that, that uh, or a testimony or a, something that spoke to you as we was reading those scriptures? God. And it is. I mean, that's an inviting to just be still. And I think that's another thing of the enemy. You know, all of a sudden you're going to check this. Well, you know, should I do this? Should I do that? You know, what should I do? What should I do? And uh, just be still. And knowing mm-hmm. how good the shepherd is, the father is, and uh, just the confidence in that. It's okay to be still. Mm-hmm. He would do 
So when he would go out there at the very first night, they kind of was a little leery of me, but by the second night, I walked around and, and all that. They walked beside me, I'd you know, scratch him and all this kind of thing. But it, a lot of the things that she shared is, I look back at that, she gets lost, the shepherd finds him, all this kind of thing. Countless times I've been lost, God finds me, leads me back, you know, and all that. I mean, it's just so, so real. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's good. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. I, I did some that for Bill Ernst and comes out with it. Yeah. And that is true. Those sheep do get to look you. Mm -hmm. You can talk a certain way. Oh, yeah. Is that really? Yeah. Hmm. It, it's just not a thing. Yeah. Anybody else? see him that's the last resort kind of communication mm -hmm. once it's to hear when we see him it's kind of over we'll be like we'll be as yeah, when I mean, we see him <laughs> you know people have seen, yeah. said well yeah. Jesus showed up well that was last resort you yeah listening mm -hmm. he had to get through to you somehow yeah on some point you know. yeah and you know i i Again, it's just that uh, picture that he really wants to have conversation with us, and uh, and to really get you know just to get to know his voice, and so again that doesn't re that doesn't give you the picture of a God who is who's out to get you. It gives you a a, a loving heavenly Father. He's for you. He's he's in this with you. You know, if you're if you're wounded, you're hurt, uh, you got a broken leg, whatever it is, yeah, he's going after you. He's going to carry you through. He's going to be there to bind up the wounds, and and he already did that. Jesus, you know, did that on the cross. But um, but that's his attitude, you know. And so uh, sometimes just letting that love relationship or that conversation relationship, let that really uh, grow in your life. Uh, can just really change your, it can get all the works out of it. You're not working. You're just enjoying the, the, the relationship. You're enjoying the conversation. And it's not about works or performance. It's just about uh, being in that relationship with him. Amen? Amen? So when you go to bed tonight, you can count sheep. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, oh, yeah, well, there I am, you know. And, uh, and you know, uh, when we're, um, there's a number of black sheep, usually in the group, and there's white sheep. And uh, maybe you feel like the black sheep, but you're still in the flock. <laughs> and the heavenly flock, and the shepherd's looking over you just like, <laughs> so, oh, it don't matter that I'm the black sheep, you know. God, and uh, he's right there watching over too. And so is that doggy, you know, and the uh, Holy Spirit. He's the muscle. He's going to, he sees you starting to go somewhere, fall off the cliff, whatever. I read one story where the, the sheep, they'll follow to the point that they would fall off a cliff. They had a testimony that they just, you know, but, uh, uh, which we've all jumped off some cliffs. But the, the Holy Spirit's there. He sees you getting close to a cliff. I mean, he's going to be over there nudging and uh, get you round up, try to get you back in the, um, 
so you're, you're safe. Amen? Praise God. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord, for just your care for us. And Lord, as we think about this, Lord, that just that love relationship and that just talking relationship with you, that it might just grow in each, and one, each one of us. Lord, that we just to have that, our thinking changed and renewed and expanded in that area. We do uh, pray for uh, Dick tonight, Lord. We speak healing over him and, and, and life and uh, command that uh, pneumonia to be gone in Jesus' name. Lord God, we lift up uh, Super Sunday. We thank you, Lord, for just uh, all this being orchestrated there. We thank you, Lord, for helping us get all the details done and, and everything coming together. We thank you for the drawing of souls to that place. And, Lord God, just the openness of the, of the heavens, Lord, just the pouring out of your spirit. Uh, that's going to happen that day. We thank you and we praise you. We declare that. We declare that just the uh, salvation and deliverance and healings in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the body of Christ and, the, and each one of us knows somebody that needs prayer for different reasons. And so, Lord, we just lift up our body the one, and we just speak life and healing and encouragement and strength. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, that you're ministering uh, to your sheep, and Lord, that you love them, that you're watching over and you care, and Lord, that uh, we're, we're part of that. And so we thank you and we praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God.